Hi everyone, my name is Michelle and I'm Mama Loves You GB here on FlossTube, but also over on Instagram and Etsy as well. Welcome to the Sunday morning briefing. It is the 16th of April today. I know that because I'm filming on the Saturday and today is my father-in-law, well, Chris's dad's birthday. He's 70 today, so happy birthday, Jim. Uh, you'll probably never see this, but just in case you ever do. <laughs> so I have got so much to show you this this episode um I've got a little bit of stuff that I've stitched I've got a fair few things that I've finished I've got a treat box I've got a little bit of haul plus a couple of patterns that I was going to show you last week and I've got the winners of the giveaway from two weeks ago I'm going to save the winners till the very end um, and what I'll do is I'll say cheerio um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to read through the winners and show the patterns and then I've got a little a little clip to add on to the end of all of the comments um, that were chosen by the random comment picker and I'll put all the winners names and what they've won in the drop down box as well so because there's quite a lot of them um, there was 20 giveaways I'm pretty sure that most folks won't want to sit through all of the results especially if you didn't enter but if you did then you must wait and have a look and see Right, <clears throat> I've still got a little bit of an annoying cough, but it's not so bad. Ness has got the chicken box, <laughs> bless her. So we've had like, the last three days have been really, really nice. They've been the nicest days of the holidays and she's got chicken pox, bless her. She must have caught it literally the last day at school. Um, I think 10 day incubation or so she must have caught it right the very last day at school but I'd much rather she had it now and she's not doing too bad she hasn't got lots and lots of spots she's not covered head to foot head to foot um, she's not a spotty Maldoon as my mum would call her she's not covered head to foot she's got quite quite a few but not so many on her face which is always nice so um yeah bless her so we're we're sort of housebound at the moment well she is she's been to the woods um because she's not going to see anyone there but other than that she's housebound she's got an inset day on monday which is when they should be going back to school so hopefully fingers crossed she'll have kind of crusted over by by tuesday and be ready to go back to school so let me show you what i've been working on the first thing i've been working on is needle and flax by Teresa koga this was a Patreon release originally. Um, I think, I can't remember what occasion she released it for, but it was, it was like an extra. It wasn't one of the monthly ones, it was an extra. And I just fancied this, just fancied working on this. So it's on a piece of 36 count tin roof. That I'm stitching two over two. Now normally I'd only stitch one over two on 36 count, but. I forgot I'd bought 36 count and I thought it was 32 count so I started with two strands and it looks it looks just fine so I haven't ironed it so there is where I'm up to I did get quite a lot done now most of the main elements are in and there's just a bit of filling to do her dress the sort of mound where flax is this bottom border here now there is something wrong with that bird being a bit too close to that star and I can't for the life of me work out why but that's how it shall stay it's only a stitch too close and it'll be fine once it's finished so that was what I worked on I did a good good couple of days on that one and then as I said to you, I was going to try and get uh, Maria Foskett finished by the end of the Easter holidays. And I'm close. I am close. I, I'm not quite finished yet, but I am close. So this is Maria Foskett. I'm calling her the Duck Jugglers. Let me just put a piece of board across the back because I did take the back off of it. So all you see is straight through now. There we go. So this is the duck duck, I can't say it. Why do I call it something I can't even say? The duck jugglers. And I just love this. I just absolutely love it. So this is where I am. And 
I would say it's a reasonably faithful reproduction. The colours I've chosen are the closest colours that I could get to the back. There's some colours on the back that they're the same on the back and the front so I presume that's the colour that it always was. But this is where I am and I have another chance to iron this one. So this is where I am. Now you'll probably notice that one of the things that's different is that you can read the lettering and I've kind of done that on purpose because with Maria's her lettering colour is so close to her fabric colour that unless you're really up close and even then it's a bit of a struggle if I'm honest um, <coughs> excuse me so I've decided to make it just a little bit brighter or a little bit darker should I say so it's in the same tone as the linen but one or two shades darker so you can much more clearly see ye little flock whom Jesus feeds dismiss your anxious cares look to the shepherds of your souls and smile away your fears now as we've already discussed Maria's A's are all back to front uh, her J is back to front there and her D's are back to front so it says shepherd and then it says amb amb I can't even say it rather than and but I think that's I love that about it it's part of the charm and so I think you can actually more clearly see it now I love these strong reds so you can see if I show you the back of the sampler there are those really strong oops doing a bit of duck juggling of my own those really strong reds on the back so she I'm hoping will be finished next week possibly even framed but I would say she's probably going to be out at the beginning of May I just love her I absolutely love her she's one of my favorite samplers that I actually own so let me put that back over there out the way so that is all the stitching that I've done this week and if you follow me on Instagram you'll know that I've done more finishing this week and I've managed to leave up the sewing machine and the bits and bobs all this week because I've just been kind of dipping in and out of it. Um, I need some sky hooks now. Now this room is a bit of a state as usual but not for the usual reason. I decided that I was going to pull out under the bed because I decided that was going to be a much better storage for all my fabrics and things like that than it was for heeled shoes like this that I'm never going to wear again. We had that moment. We had that moment where I'm looking at these shoes and I even tried them on and I was like, I would not survive a night in these shoes anymore. I can, I managed to give myself a grade three tear um, of my ligaments in flat shoes. I was literally just stood there, <laughs> just stood there. And the next moment my ankle went crunk like that. And that was it, I couldn't walk on it. I do not have very good balance, that is one thing. Well, I would say that's one of my faults, there are many, but my balance is one. <laughs> Chris was watching me in the garden, and to be fair, I had his sandals on. Now, he's got a size 11 feet, I've got a size 7 feet, so they were a bit big. And it was quite windy out in the garden, and he was in the kitchen. And he came back in, and he was killing himself laughing. I said, what is the matter with you? And he said, I've just watched you nearly fall over, stood standing up. And the wind caught me a bit wrong and I had a bit of a wobble. I wasn't even drunk. And um, I nearly fell over. So I'm thinking that I do not need high heels. Oh, there were some beautiful Kurt Geiger ones in there. I was really sorry to see him go. But the charity shop had a good had a good deal. But there were some ones in there and I'm thinking, how on earth did I ever? So they have gone. I've kept the flat ones. I've kept a couple with like little tiny heels just for posterity. Uh, I kept my favourite ever wit shoes. I'm going to have to show you those, two seconds. Now I call them wit shoes. 
but I wear these. I haven't for a little while, but I would I would love to wear them again. And they are from look at those. Look at those. And they've got a proper like turn up to the toe. They're from Office from about probably 15 years ago, if I care to admit. But aren't they just amazing shoes? There was no way I could part with those. Even if I could, I'd be alright in those, I think. But I'll just chuck them back in the pot. But yeah, so I've now got a messy room, but I've sorted out all my fabrics and I've got them sort of folded up and, and each box is kind of like a rainbow box. So when it comes to trying to do some more finishing, it should be easier. It should be easier. Let me show you what I finished. I'm going to show you, first of all, um, what I finished that I've already put on Instagram. And this is my three red pairs. So I don't know how easy it's going to be to show them all in one, one go. So these are my three red pairs. So by Annie B's Folk Art. And then that's the fabric on the back and the sides. They were really, really simple to finish. That one I've just put down actually is a little bit understuffed to the point where I might actually pull the bottom off them and redo it. But I followed the instructions. I've used a combination of walnut shells, crushed walnut shells or lizard litter. And there's a little bit of um, fibre fill in there as well in some of the corners. Some of it's not quite how I would have quite liked it but most of it worked out really really well and I'm really pleased. So I followed the instructions the only thing that I did slightly differently was I made my top bits like a pick. So this is actually a um, big paper clip that I've unwound and I've glued my stem around the top and then I put the two leaves on and then I've pushed the whole lot in and I have got on the others just a little stitch holding it down but I purposely left that one unstitched that I could show you how I'd done that top bit. So those are my three red pairs and part of me I was quite nervous about finishing them because they're I've not made anything like that before but now I can't wait to start the blue pairs because they were really easy to make really easy to make so I can't wait to start the blue pairs now let's pop those there and what else did I finish I finished this little bag well I say finished it I've got to put a little bit of ribbon on the top but I did a little Halloween bag that you would hang up on a door and it's lined although I didn't do the lining very deep because I thought if you want to put like um, Halloween kind of picks and bits and bobs in there you don't want it to be massively deep so there's that I'll have to look up and put the name of the pattern underneath because I can't quite remember but this is fox and rabbit fabric that was one of their fabrics of the month one of the colour fabrics of the month so I don't know whether it's going to become part of their line or not but it was called blueberry I think so I made that which I was quite pleased with I made <laughs> now the thing I've not managed to find is I've got a whole bag of off cuts of mount board for making tops and bottoms of drums and things like that could I find it could I heck so I've got two drums that I've sewn into the sort of cuffs as it were. This is from the Snowflower Diaries and I think it's called Red Scissors. This is from Plum Street Samplers and it is called Count Twice Stitch Once which was advice that I should have taken whilst making it but didn't. So 2022 on the back there. So yeah, I need to find my cardboard and make a top and a bottom for those. 
thought I'd show you anyway. I made this, which I think was a freebie from Stone Street Stitch Works. Um, couldn't tell you what fabric it is, not sure. And then I just had a little bit of sewing machine fabric. I think it needs something else at the top here because my trim goes behind the I should really have probably bought it in front but I don't know we'll see it might need something else up there so there's that one and I also did this one so this is not I think this is not Forgotten Farm but I can't remember what it's called but it's a witch on some big scissors and a bit of Lady Dot creates trim chenille trim I think it's called the colour is Jack and then I just put some black cat fabric on the back so nice little Halloween pillow and then I made this so I'm going to try and hold this up I don't know why I've just moved that because it's not going to stay this is a tray there we go that I've made with Blackbird Designs. I'm gonna have to put the pattern name across the bottom. It was a stitch along that I did. Hang on, let me just show you. Ah, it was a stitch along that I did. And I finished mine into a little tray. So let me show you. This is the tray base. It's not very straight. It's not quite the size that I wanted it to be. That's it on the back. See, look, it's got a bit of wrinkling on the back. But better it's finished and out than just in a box. And I purposely left this big space over here because one of the other designs I turned into a big strawberry with a lovely big mother of pearl button and with some of the backing fabric I made another tiny little strawberry as well. There is I think a couple more charts in the book that I might make another couple of little doodads to go in there as well. If not I'll just make it a tray for collecting all my strawberries. Nikki Noodles. I that's been driving me mad. I was like, oh, I haven't said who I did the style with. Because I couldn't, I, I knew I could picture her. I can describe her, but I just couldn't get the, the channel name. Nikki Noodles, that's who it was. We started the stitch along. A, I still can't remember the name of the pattern. And that's pushing it. But yeah. We started it and I'm sure she finished hers ages ago and probably finished it properly as well. And then my last finish. Have you ever done a finish and you know how it's going to look? And it actually ends up looking like that. This was amazing. So this I've done for Ness's bedroom. So this is Legendary Girls by tumbleweeds which is Little House Needleworks and it says I figure if a girl wants to be a legend she should just go ahead and be one and I bought this metal arrow ages ago because I thought that will come in handy for a finish and this is stitched on old gold by I want to say seraphim either seraphim or fibre on a whim, but I think it's seraphim. And then on the back, I've got like a Wild West kind of sheriff's star on the back. And that's what it looks like. So I can't wait to put that on her wall. Now, I don't think these two are quite the same length, although they were when I stitched it. Well, they obviously weren't, but they were meant to be. So I think I might put the arrow on a slightly jaunty angle and that will bring the wanted. I think it just looks like a wanted poster. That's what I liked about it. 
or I could feather it so that it's straight but I like it I like it as it is I quite like the thought that the arrows kind of shot through the air so I like it there we go so that was my finishing that I did because all the other finishes require some kind of cardboard <laughs> which I can't yet find so I'll try and put some more pictures up of those in the coming days so that you can have a better look at them on Instagram they're not perfect they really aren't perfect the stitching is not perfect the finishing isn't perfect but if I wanted perfect I'd buy it from a shop so I had fun I developed my skills in finishing um, and I'm happy I had a good time I'm happy right I'm going to show you a little bit of haul then I'll do the treat box then we'll go on to do the um, winners winners so we're going to start off with the freebie now the freebie is there this was sent to me by a lady called Karen and well actually I saw it in my feed and then I noticed I had a message and I thought I bet you Karen's letting me know about that because she's very good at letting me know about freebies this is called April showers by Silver Creek samplers and I think it's absolutely lovely I really really want to stitch it I think it's fab um, it is 35 by 63 so if you've got a retreat to go to anytime soon you could knock that out super quick I think that's lovely to me that's begging to be done on with sulky threads on 36 count so on 36 count it could be two by three and a half inches so that would make a super duper little ornament or a little pillow love that in fact Silver Creek samplers have had a couple of really good freebies recently so do go and have a look at those now the other things that I promised I'd show you last week which I wrongly blamed my mother for pinching off the uh, uh, printer I just haven't printed them um, were some stitches in Just Cross Stitch magazine the, the latest one that I really liked now Unfortunately, some of them are printed on that horrible recycled paper that I managed to get, which I thought we'd got rid of it all. I thought I'd used it all up and it still keeps appearing in the printer, even though I put like fresh paper in. I don't know. I'm being played by this recycled paper. So the first one is called Summer Fairy by um, Stitchy Princess. And as soon as you see it, you'll recognise the designer. I'm going to pop her name, Katerina. I'm going to leave that and you can pronounce the second part of the name because I will get that totally wrong but isn't that lovely isn't that lovely so loved that I then had to print out Peacock Manor as well so Peacock Manor doo -doo -doo, is a design by Laurie Pengelly now of pansy patch quilts and stitchery now there's her name there and we have a set of woods nearby us with a very very similar name and that gets changed to Pengelly in uh, Welsh so but I'm pretty sure it's Pengelly I'm, I'm, I'm sure she's not Welsh she may be but I don't think she is so this is Peacock Manor love the colours in that really really nice I'd like an alphabet, but I'm not sure as I do the alphabet on that one. I think I like it better without. And then lastly, I liked this one as well. Now, where is... Where's the cover for I'm not doing very well now, am I? It must be that. That must be the cover for it. Yes, it is. This is called Dance in the Moonlight. And this is Alison Peterson of Cozy Cabin Stitching. I liked that one as well. So I have to say, sometimes Just Cross Stitch, their normal monthly magazines are a bit hit and miss for me. Um, but three this month I thought were really, really good. I get mine on Readly, which means I just pay one amount and I have access to 
hundreds of well not hundreds of thousands but thousands of different uh magazines we have five different profiles so everybody in the house gets them i just pay one sum per month and that suits us fine um you get all the back um back issues as well so if you've not heard of readly do check it out i got some little bits and bobs from a d stash and from ebay the first one i got from ebay was this little pillow now it's already made up and you put your hand inside like that to stitch and it did come with the the stuffing as well a little bit flu 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 for me but i was buying some other stuff from the lady and this ended up going for 1.99 so i thought well i'll give it a try i'll give it a try if i pick the right design i think it will look I think it will look nice maybe like a big sample motif or something in there i think it will look nice and from the same lady i got my needle berry i when i made that strawberry i realized how much i like making strawberries and how many more strawberry charts i needed so i got that one and again this was from the same <coughs> lady chris mooseberry i might have this one I might have this one I'm not sure but again it was going for like two pounds so I thought even if I've got it I don't mind I'll use it as a giveaway and then I bought these from another lady on a d-stash so I bought Quaker sewing tray it's a bit of a theme kind of red houses summery red houses I bought that one and then I bought goodbye four from Plum Street Samplers and Hello Winter from Plum Street, Plum Street Samplers. It's not hard to say, Michelle. Although this lip gloss that I have got on has pretty much gummed my mouth together. <clears throat> it's very sticky. Right, let's put those down out of the way. And my last purchase was a little sampler. <laughs> a little sampler, because I needed another one of those. I just loved the colours of this. It's not dated, but I'm confident that it's kind of 1880s, somewhere around there. But it was the colours that really drew my attention. And this is by Emma Roan, November the 8th. Now, I couldn't see a date on it anywhere. I have looked and looked and looked. And I'm going to have another look again because I'm sure you'll all be shouting at me if... There is one on there, but I can't see one. But I think it was the inclusion of that kind of purpley blue that really drew my attention. I've not seen that before. And I loved it in combination with the red. Now, if you're ever worried about how neat your back is, Emma's got something to say on that. <laughs> She's got something to say on that. So, um, yeah, beautiful, beautiful. And I think I would just reproduce this and just make it into a pillow. I think it's just, whoops, so uncooperative, but gorgeous. Love, 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 love. Interesting name, Roan. Not, not one I've heard before. I still don't think it's going to make it any easier to find it though. <laughs> right, the treat box. Now, this comes from a company called Try Treats and they send me these boxes for free um, because they know that I like to try them on air and I, they know that you guys like watching me. Just when you think that that cough has gone. <laughs> oh, that one caught me. But this, this, get used to this look because I've had a look in here and I've seen which country it's from. <clears throat> it's not going to be all a nice sweet one I don't think so it comes nicely packaged we've already had a little look Ness gets excited when these come alive as well so this is from Taiwan so I can't remember where the last one was not the last one that had all the the warnings on it but the one before that that nearly killed me because it was so spicy 
and part of it went in my eye. Hence I've got the safety goggles on today. So let's have a look and see what we've got in here. So we've got some of these. I prefer I must admit I prefer the savoury ones. We've got some of these, which cheese arari, which I think are just gonna be some kind of cheesy type crisps. We have got some potato twists, rose salt flavour. Interesting to try those. Then we have got these. These are called Soccer Jelly by Dragonfly. A jelly snack in the shape of a soccer ball. Well, that not, that's not a soccer ball, that's a strawberry and a pineapple. So, it's a, it says jelly, so I promised Ness I'd leave her one of those, so we'll have to just go for one of those. Then we've got these little things which are called haw flakes. Traditional sweets made from the fruit of the hawthorn. That's slow, isn't it? Is that slow? There we go. Um, that which seems to have a hazelnut on the front potentially that way up that is maron pie oh chestnut filling not an acorn chestnut filling has a very soft and strong matcha flavor I'll give that a go um this looks like a little squashed uh what you call them croissant -y type bread i might give that a swerve because i don't think that would be necessarily that interesting some little broken crackers a grilled senbei rice cracker which is rich in green lava in the mouth finished with a mellow salty taste that brings out the flavor of kelp and bonito most of those words I'm not sure about. This I won't be eating. Crispy crepes with ginger filling. I cannot abide ginger. And then these are nutrition biscuits. Scrumptious nutritional award-winning biscuits. They look like um, Jacob's cream crackers. So, I need some sky hooks. Let's get going. What should we go for first? Cheese crackers? Now, if you're wondering why I seem to be sitting lower down, it's because I've lost the top of my tripod and you're actually just balanced on it now. So, if I were to kick the tripod, I'd have to catch it. They look like disappointing quavers. And they taste exactly like quavers. They're just quavers. So we'll not worry too much more about those. They are just quavers. On to the second course. I didn't realise these are called Lonely God. Interesting. Now they look like they're going to be. There we go. They look like they're going to be like, you know, those salt and vinegar twists that you get, but pink. And that is a light pink colour. I couldn't give you a DMC on it, but it is a light pink. Those are delicious. I'll tell Ness they're horrible. I like those. Now, I did bring up a drink. Not part of the box, but I did bring up a drink. Right. I've got this like balanced on my knee. Let's try one of these Jacob's cream crackers. It's a good job I did bring up drinks. If they are like Jacob's cream crackers, they take all of the flavour from your mouth. Ooh, 
Now, they're like a tea biscuit. They're like a rich tea biscuit, actually. I bet they would go good in a cup of tea, actually. Because rich tea biscuits tend to hold their hold their shape a bit, even when dunked. I'm pretty sure that they were not designed for dunking in tea. But being British, I shall be dunking those in some tea. What else have we got? This weird little cracker thing. I can't remember if I held this up before. I'm not sure I did. Now, you know those little rice crackery, um, they come in little trays. And they're like almost like a combination between rice cracker and seaweed. That's what it tastes like. But I quite like those. There's definitely a hint of the sea in there. I wouldn't say fishy, but definitely a hint of the sea. Chestnut one. Let's have a little go with this chestnut one. It rattles. I'm not sure if that's meant to happen. It rattles. It's horrible texture. And I don't taste it better then. That's disappointing. Quite like a claggy texture and it doesn't taste of anything at least we haven't got the really like spicy stuff that we had in that other bis uh, that other box right we've got the Hawthorne sweets and then either the strawberry or the pineapple I think I'll try the pineapple one because I think Ness will probably prefer the strawberry one so Let's have a little look. Mm -hmm. Ooh. They're like little tiddlywinks. They look like bits of cardboard. Either people in Taiwan have got a way better palette than I have. I get a tiny hint of fruit at the end. Tiny hint of fruit. Now, I think this is the last thing. Other than those hideous ginger biscuits, which I don't intend to eat. I don't care where in the world they come from. A ginger biscuit is a nasty ginger biscuit. I can't remember who was talking about this the other day. But when your mother used to put ginger biscuits in the jar and they used to make everything else taste gingery and horrible. Now, I've no idea how I'm meant to get into this. I'm guessing that this is the top. Are you expected to have scissors on hand? Don't look, people, don't look. These were technically little sewing, not sewing scissors, little hairdressing scissors. So I don't feel too bad about using those. Right. Has that enabled me to get into it? No. It just exploded. Hang on. I need to go. Surely kids in Taiwan aren't expected to have scissors in their pocket. I've maybe done this wrong. So. Ooh. Now 
Now that, I think maybe if I'd bitten on it hard enough, it would have come open. That is tasty. That's good. Do you know what would make that even better? That was a pina colada flavour. <laughs> I'd be all over those. If they could make little mini pina coladas in there. I'm going to finish it because if I put it down somewhere, then there'll be a sticky mess everywhere. Mm. Thumbs up to those. So if you want to get your hands on a treat box, I'll put all the information down below. They're great gifts. They would make a great gift or a great thing, sort of a Eurovision thing. Is anybody interested in Eurovision? It's not too long away. So like you have to bring treats or snacks from a certain country. I know Taiwan aren't in Eurovision. Don't get me wrong. But that sort of idea, it'd be really great fun. So I'm going to say cheerio now. It's been quite a long video. And then I'm going to go through the winners. So if you entered for anything, please stay and see if you've won something. Stay classy, Stitchers. Right, welcome along. I've put these in the right order. So hopefully I should just be able to hold it up and tell you who's won. So, number one was Christmas Wishes by Little Dove Designs, and the winner of that was Sarah Ward. I'm not going to put the picture up of the comment here. I'm going to put that up afterwards because I made already made a little film strip of that. <coughs> Got some of that pineapple jelly on the go. Number two was Home for Christmas by Little Dove Designs, and this is Flossy Sews and Grows. Snowflake Serenade, uh, Cottage Garden, no, nope, not Cottage Garden, Cottage, Country Cottage, I knew there was a cottage in there somewhere, Needleworks, Mary Turner, Countdown to Christmas by Country Cottage Needleworks <laughs> is Barb Mack, Winter Welcome by Country Cottage Needleworks is Margot Egan, Santa Baby by It's So Emma is Jamie Claunch Seeger. Sorry if I've butchered your name. I think I might do it again before the, the day is out. Um, Find Comfort by The Scarlet House is Jacqueline Liebfried. Liebfriend? Fried? Liebfried. Sorry, Jacqueline. Reindeer Games by Erica, My Erica Michaels is Beverly McInnes. Jelly Bean Jubilee with Thy Needle and Thread is Margaret Miller. Home Sweet Home with the Little Button is, um, where are we, Helen Donaldson. The Halloween Squirrel, the Blue Flower is the Knot Cross Stitcher. Quiet Place with the Little Sheep Button is... Lynn Davidson and then Family by Country Cottage Needleworks is Rosa Moulton. So then we had three charts from my own uh, Etsy shop. Now it's up to you if you want to wait and hang on for um, Maria Foskett then you're more than welcome to. You don't have to use your sort of voucher as it were straight away so if you just contact me and say oh I'm going to wait, that's fine. So the first one was our Nuke Van Dressel. Dressel. Um, then the second one was Laurie Zanecki. And the third one was John Ege, J O N I J. So apologies to you three because I've probably got it totally wrong. And then we have the Jersey Girl pins or the Jersey Girl Stitch Co pins let's get it right the first one was the Night Court and that was won by Wolf Down the Rabbit Hole whose name is Jen I know that much well done Jen uh, Lena's pins is that Lena's pins yeah Lena's pins is Yarn Lyrical uh, All is Bright 
is Carol and Alan Liversidge. Oh, just show you what you've won. They twisted around in the. And now they're totally upside down. There you go, those ones. And the last one, the sewing box, was Chris Hindle. Well done, Chris. There we go. So, if you can contact me either by email, my email address is in the drop down box, or you can DM me on Instagram. Uh, for those of you who've won a PDF, I just need your email address. For those of you who've won a physical item, I need you to uh, send me your postal address and I will get those out in the post as soon as I can. So congratulations everyone. I'll see you next week. Stay classy stitchers again. <laughs>